Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and today I have to say I was really in the mood for some pops of pink. So we've got a bunch of new makeup today that we're going to be looking at. So these are new releases that I used to create today's look and let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start off just by going over what I have on as a base. I used the Dior Forever uh, Skin Veil Primer as well as the Chanel Sublimage Concealer in shade 02 and the uh, Clay de Peau, <laughs> the foundation in I-10. And that's what I have on for my base. Following that, we moved into eyes. So today I wanted to highlight one of my new favorite eye pencils. You know, I picked this up, this came out in December. This is from Victoria Beckham and it's one of her Satin Cajal liners. So Victoria Beckham recently came out with the Jewel liners, which all have some shimmer in them and she first released three shades then she came out with this one this is smoky quartz this is my favorite and you can use these eye pencils you know as a liner of course but you can also use them all over the lid for eyeshadow and that's what i did here today so let's take a look at the demo you can definitely put this on you know with just a finger you can even just use a sponge tip applicator on the other side of the pencil but i decided to use a brush and i wanted something that was fairly firm, kind of like a shader style brush that did not have a lot of flex or give. So I chose a Kalinske brush and Kalinske is a type of sable hair that you can use with any type of product. So liquid, creams, powders, whatever, you can definitely use it with that. This one here is from Hukudo. And you know, if you don't have one of these brushes, just look for some sort of stiff soft shader style brush if you want to you know use it with this type of formula i think they work really well something undyed goat hair or synthetic would be a good option as well now as for the liner you can see that it goes on very nicely when you build it up it's kind of deeper and smokier this is like a smoky taupe kind of shade with a little bit of golden shimmer in it and when you start spreading this out with either your brush or finger or whatever, you can see it definitely shears out. So you can build it up to get it more pigmented if you'd like, but I think it's just a really beautiful taupe shade. So the Victoria Beckham liners are 1.2 grams of product. They're made in Germany and they have a one year shelf life. The first thing that this particular liner made me think of is the Chanel Stilo Ombre Contour in number 40, which was limited edition came out like a while back for spring and this was called beige perlay and it's one of my favorites i tried to get it back up and i was too late you can see that they are going to have a fairly similar finish the chanel's slightly more satiny whereas the victoria beckham is definitely a little bit more glittery you see more of that golden shimmer and the Chanel's also a little bit of a warmer taupe shade. It's not quite as cool tone. So Chanel, Victoria Beckham. And then another comparison. This is one of the LH Cosmetics or Linda Hallberg Cosmetics crayons. And you can use her crayons for anything, lips, eyes, face, anywhere on there. And this is called Spar Flash. And uh, yeah, you can see this is gonna be a bit deeper. Again, it's a little bit more brown. It's also slightly cooler in tone and the shimmer in this is actually going to be silver and not gold. And then of course, let's take a look at the three original jewel liners. So we're gonna start off with sequin green. I open the wrong side, but this is what the sponge tip applicator looks like on this side. And then here is the, the green, the jewel green or sequin green rather. You can see that it's, a little bit like a camouflage olive with golden shimmer in it. And then we have Night Flash, which is my favorite. And this is gonna be a deep charcoal gray with blue shimmer. And then last up, we have Gold Lame, which, oops, just broke off my tip there. <laughs> but uh, you can see Gold Lame is going to be a soft gold with golden shimmer. This one though really shears out. So it's not as present as some other gold liners that you might have in your collection. It's pretty light. Overall, I have to say the new liner in Smoky Quartz is probably one of my favorites from the Victoria Beckham line. I love the formula. I do find that these liners, uh, you know, if you're using them to 
actually like line your eyes or you do your waterline or so forth. I personally get smudging from these. Um, you know, I know some people don't, but for me, I have typically normal oil levels on my lids and they do not remain smudge proof throughout the day. I have to kind of, you know, smudge it out. If I use it as a smudgy liner and I smear it out a little bit, I can let that set and that'll be fine. But if I'm gonna build it up without doing that, I do have smudging and transfer throughout the day. But I love them anyway because they are so incredibly creamy and I just, I love the way they glide on. Next up we have the Byredo Mixed Emotions Mascara. So this is a volumizing mascara and this is actually going to be a burgundy shade. So let's go ahead and show you a swatch there. Look at that. It's kind of like, almost like a blood red with an eggplant base. It's a really beautiful shade. And I'm gonna show you a demo here where you can see this in just a second, but take a look at our actual wand here. So we've got the concave convex side. Notice here on our convex side that the bristles are gonna be longer. And when we go to concave, it, they're gonna be a little bit shorter. So I did one side of the wand for each eye. Let's take a look at that. As we're looking at the convex side, you can see that this is really how you wanna get a lot of product onto your lashes. This will give you a lot of volumizing for your lashes. You're really distributing a lot of product. You can get some clumping with this because again, you're really gathering that product a lot kind of at the root there. So you can leave it like that if you prefer that volumizing, clumpier kind of look. But if you would like something a little bit softer and more natural looking, use the concave side where it has the shorter bristles. You can see you're really gonna get those fluffier lashes and you're going to get a little bit of a lift. Now, if you want volumizing and fluffy lashes, you just wanna use the convex side first, distribute all of that product, and then go in afterwards with the concave side of the wand to kind of distribute that a little bit more, make them a little fluffier, get a little bit of lift. And that's gonna give you the best of both worlds. I have to say, I really do like this mascara. I love the color and yeah, I'm really happy with it. So this is made in Italy and it is 14 milliliters of product and you have a six month shelf life. Moving on, Armani came out with a new shade in the Neo New Melting Color Balms. I absolutely love this formula, but I do find their shade selection is pretty limited and they have a lot of like nude shades, you know, uh, obviously it's a Neo Nude, <laughs> but uh, you know, I was so happy to see kind of this like poppy pink kind of shade. Um, pop as in like a pop of pink. It's actually gonna be a warm carnation pink shade, Look at that. And what I love about this formula is it's a, a, clean, a cream product with like a lot of slip and glide. You can feel that, it feels a little bit like silicone as a texture, but it really, like when you put it on, you have a powder finish there. And just give this a second to sit and it's going to set and it lasts all day on me. So I absolutely love this and yeah, really happy. So this is shade 52 and I think this is fantastic. Looking at the demo for this blush, you can see that, you know, you really get a lot of pigment very easily. It's a dense product, meaning it's not like fluffy or creamy. You're not gonna see a lot of indents in the pan as you're using it, but the pigment actually gets picked up very easily with finger or brush or sponge, whatever you're choosing to use. And it really dispenses very easily onto the skin. You can blend it out. And then again, it's gonna to dry to that powder finish in seriously just like 10 seconds or so. So you'll actually be able to feel it. If you go and touch your skin, you're gonna feel a bit more of a powder finish. So I applied it with the Sonia G Mini Base Brush on one side versus just my fingers on the other. If you want more pigmentation, definitely go with a finger application. You can keep it in one place a little bit better, really build that up. But the brush application is gonna give you a really smooth, seamless application. And I really love the shade, love this formula. If you haven't tried this formula yet, you know, definitely pick a color and try it out. It's one of the best on the market. All right, so we're just gonna do a few comparisons. First up, this is one of the other Armani shades. This is obviously going to be a lot more purple and cooler. This is shade number 50. And you can see it's kind of got this dusty mauve kind of look. Absolutely love it. This is one of my favorites. And it's actually the only blush shade I have in this formula so far, but I'm really hoping they have more colors like these. I really like them. Next, I wanted to take a look at the Clay de Po Cream Blush in shade number one. And let's 
go ahead and take a look at that. You can see this is gonna be a little bit deeper of a shade. It is similar, but this has a bit more rose in it and it's a little bit cooler and deeper. Now the Clay de Poe cream blush is my favorite cream blush formula, but Armani really has kind of that powder finish kind of set. I, I mean like that is, is just incredible. So really, you know, slightly different in texture. They're both creamy going on, but the Clay de Poe is a true cream blush that lasts all day and you know, it'll set and everything but it is still a cream whereas the armani really does have that powder finish so depending on what you like you know they're both great options then we have the victoria beckham blush stick in major there we go so here's major you can see this is going to be deeper a bit more rosy pink as well and this is the melt cream blush in pink sand and in there's pink sand and you can see it's going to be similar in color you know this is pretty close let me go ahead and swatch the Armani again with these so here's the Armani I'm just gonna go ahead and swipe this all the way across so we kind of can definitely see all of those shades with it and you can see that all of these shades are going to be pretty similar, especially once you put them on the skin, they're all going to look pretty close. And then I did want to look at one powder blush. This is the Gucci in 03 Radiant Pink. And let's put that right here. You can see this is going to be a little bit brighter than uh, any of these actually. So it's also just got a little bit more warmth to it, kind of like a a more vibrant orange tone to it than you get with the others. It's not orangey or super warm, just a little bit more so in comparison with these, which are a little bit rosier. So just one more time, this swatch and this swatch here, these are shade 52 in the Armani. Then we have shade 50 in the Armani, followed by the Clay de Poe cream blush in number one, Victoria Beckham blush stick in major, and then we have pink sand in the uh, melt cream blush and this is the powder blush in gucci 03. by the way armani has sales on their site pretty frequently so you can sign up for newsletters there and you know until the last couple of sales these neo nude blushes typically were not included in the sales but they have been recently so you know i think they're new not new enough anymore to always be excluded. So it's definitely a great way to save some money on these, um, you know, when the next sale pops up. And next we're taking a look at the new Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Glow Glide Face Architect Highlighter in Moonlit Glow. So this is seven grams of product with a two year shelf life and it's made in Italy. So you can see you've got your traditional um, packaging here. It is refillable. You can see you've got the little circle here to push that through. And you can tell that the pan, you know, is kind of like, it's probably in there like through magnetics. And so you can, you know, mine shifts a little bit periodically. So this is Moonlight Glow. I was originally not, so you can see it twisting. I was not planning on getting this. And actually in my, will I buy it video. I said I was not gonna get this, but a couple people chimed in and said that they have it, they thought I'd really like it, and it's really not glittery, it's more of a sheen, uh, more shiny, and yeah, you can see it's not gonna be chunks of glitter, but it's definitely very radiant. So you can see here in this demo, I applied the highlighter in a couple of different ways. So first up, I used a uh, you know more dense brush. So this is actually the Sonia G um, detail pro brush and I got plenty of pigment on put that on you can see it's a pretty blinding highlight like this it's very very luminous but again I don't see glitter chunks I just see radiance and then on the other side I wanted to make it a bit more subtle so I, I chose a fan brush and in this case I use the Omnia gold fan brush and you know that really makes it a lot more subtle more wearable for every day for me and then I think that this highlighter is also really great for the eyes. So I added this using the Hukado brush that I mentioned before. I added this to the inner corner area of my eyes today and really adds some brightening, works really well with a Victoria Beckham pencil. To say I really do think this is a really nice highlighter. If you like highlighters that 
can be very beaming. You're not looking for something super subtle. This is a great option. And even if you are looking for something subtle, this can go that way too. However, if you're somebody who always goes for a subtle highlight, I'd probably go with something that's you know, not quite as easy to build as this, something that's more subtle because, you know, in general. Um, but I do think that this is a really nice versatile highlight. Let's look at a few comparisons. So the first highlighter that this made me think of is the Bobbi Brown Quartz Glow Highlighter. So let's take a look at this one, see how this compares. And you can see that the Bobbi Brown's actually a bit more yellow, whereas we have a little bit more gold in the um, Charlotte Tilbury. This one is Ilamasqua and OMG. And this is another kind of similar kind of shade. Now as for radiance, you can see the Charlotte Tilbury is more radiant than both of these. Color wise, the OMG is a little bit more champagne where we've got again, more gold in the Charlotte Tilbury. But they're still pretty close. This is Pat McGrath Venusian Nude. This is from I forget when this was, but it's a, it was a bit deep for me. So I'm actually going to end up passing this on to a friend soon. So you can see how deep that is in comparison. And then I also want to take a look at, although this isn't going to match, but this is the Chanel Eclat Lunaire or Rose highlighter that came out just recently. Let's go ahead and put this all the way here on the side, but you can see how deep that is. You can see how similar that is to the Pat McGrath. This is going to be more coppery than the Pat McGrath just slightly. Just gonna add a little bit more of the Charlotte Tilbury down below here. And let's look at just a couple more here. This is the Clay de Poe in number 104 Radiant Superstar. This is limited edition for the holidays. It was exclusive to their site. It's gone, but you can see that this is definitely gonna be more white. Honestly, this is more what I expected Moonlit Glow to be like. Uh, Moonlit Glow is a little bit warmer than I thought it was gonna be. This is the new Natasha Denona uh, Pastel uh, Plexi Glow Highlighter. And again, this one's gonna be cooler as well, but you can see you've got kind of this more bright yellow shimmer to it with a touch of like green and so forth. But again, we're more of that like antique gold vibe with the Charlotte Tilbury. So these are all of my comparisons. I would have to say that the Charlotte Tilbury is not, I don't have a dupe for any of them. My closest would be the Bobbi Brown in Quartz Glow, but that's going to be more subtle than the Charlotte Tilbury. And again, it's gonna be a little bit more of like a brighter yellow versus that antique gold vibe to it. And yeah, really beautiful finish on this. It's definitely gonna be radiant without being glittery. So thank you so much for the recommendations. Let's move on to the next product. And last up, we're looking at one of the Victoria Beckham Posh lipsticks in Alter Ego. So this shade actually was released for holiday and you know, it's, I didn't pick it up at first, but I did end up caving. You can see this is really beautiful, bright pop of pink with a blue base. Let's just build that up just a little bit so you can kind of see that swatch there. And I think it's a really beautiful color. And the formula on this, you know, it's creamy, it's comfortable. I have several shades of this. I have to say there's more pigmented shades, a little bit creamier than some of the lighter nude shades that I have. So just something to know, it's creamier and a little bit more hydrating. So I really like it. And I actually paired it with a lip pencil. I use the LH Cosmetics in Delighted Mood. So I just wanted to show you that. Uh, how well they actually match. You can see it's almost a perfect match there. Really a great color combination. So if you are interested in a bright lip color like this, but you don't wanna invest in a lipstick, or perhaps you want something that lasts a little bit better, um, these crayons from Linda Alberg, you know, they really perform super well. They are creamy, but they stay put. And this color is pretty much an exact dupe. So while we're looking at the lip demos, just a few notes about this product. We do have a one year shelf life and it's made in Italy and we have two grams of product here. So, you know, if you're not familiar with the Victoria Beckham beauty line, it is technically a clean beauty line, but you know, they do a really nice job of, you know, with their formulations. They don't necessarily feel like clean beauty products from, the past, you know, where they go bad very quickly and they don't glide on super well and so forth. So they really feel much more like a traditional makeup line. And I think that's what makes them as successful as they have been. 
And unfortunately, just like all the other brands, prices have increased. When you are purchasing things like the eye cudgels and so forth, um, or a lip pencil, you do have the option and you're purchasing from her website directly, whether or not you wanna save a couple bucks by you know, declining the inclusion of a pencil sharpener. If you're purchasing her products from like Bergdorf's or you know, one of the other websites like Violet Gray or something, you are going to always be getting that sharpener with it. So just something to note there. All right, so we have a couple of lipsticks that I thought of right away from Lisa Eldridge, uh, kind of as a comparison here. And I am going to be adding all of these to some lip palettes soon. Uh, because as you can see with this one here, you know, they are a little broken in the tube for me. Um, not all of them, but a lot of them. You can see this one here is Rainbow Spill. And Rainbow Spill was one of the like original matte shades, essentially, um, not her velvet formula. And you can see this is gonna be a warmer pink here than the Alter Ego. And then we also have Skyscraper Rose. And I love these. So these are like the, I forget what they're called, like insanely saturated. You can see that Skyscraper Rose is going to be a pretty close dupe here. This is going to be a little bit brighter, <laughs> hard to believe, but it's a slightly brighter than Alter Ego. It doesn't have quite as much of that like lavender hue that you get with Alter Ego. This is going to be more like a true bright pink. And just one more comparison. This is actually one of the Givenchy holiday lipsticks and it might be in the new permanent lines but it's the intense silk formula this is going to be a little bit more subdued than any of these shades here you can see it's still really bright but it's got more like depth to it versus brightness this is shade 338 in the lantern d intense silk uh line from Givenchy and really beautiful. You can see that the tones are gonna to be very, very similar. Oh, and uh, let's just do one more comparison here. This is the Chanel Lip Liner in 182 Rose Framboise. I actually like to wear this one on my lips quite a bit, you know, uh, especially during the summer for kind of a bright pop. But look, this is the liner. This here is Alter Ego. You can see that they're almost a dupe as well. So this is another really great option. And I love the Chanel lip liners personally. They're, you know, like a creamy dry kind of formula and they stay put and, you know, I wish their eyeliners were as good as their lip liners. Okay, so it has been about 11 hours since I applied everything. I actually removed the lipstick. I wiped it off with a tissue before dinner and you can see there's still a little bit of a stain left there. Blush has held up well, so has the highlight. Do have some creasing with the eyeliner and the mascara has been good. I'm going to move you in so you can see everything. So I hope this was helpful. I have to say overall, I do really like everything that I tried. My favorite item that I tried today would have to be the Armani Neo Nude Balm in 32. Very happy that they include this shade. Love the formula. I would love to see more shades like this from them. Followed by the Smoky Quartz Pencil from Victoria Beckham. I just love shades like that. And this formula works really well as an actual eye crayon or eye pencil, not just an eyeliner. And so I really, yeah, those would be my top two. Now, I did wanna mention the Bioradio Mascara. I really love that. I love the actual depth of color that you have with this mascara. But I have to say, you don't really see a ton of color on the lashes. If somebody's looking at you while you're wearing it, they're not gonna say, oh my goodness, are your lashes burgundy? But you will notice some subtle differences. There's gonna be something there that adds just a little bit more depth something a little different, like there's a little nuance, kind of like, what is it that's different? And that's what I like about that. And I really do like the formula of this mascara as well. So, you know, overall, I think everything were really great products. The highlighter is a really nice option for, you know, it, it gives you just like a nice radiance. So I think it's a really beautiful highlight. And honestly, this lip color, 
I love the lip color. I mean, like it's just such a great pop of color for spring. And I've really been interested in shades like this recently. This this and oranges and purples is kind of what I'm like really interested in right now for lips and cheeks. And yeah, I just think this is like the perfect spring color. So I hope this was helpful and I'd love to know if you've tried any of these products or if you're interested in any of these. And thank you so much for tuning in. Please share all your thoughts down below in the comments section and I will see you very soon. So have a wonderful day.